The C30 isn't quite the sort of car we've come to expect from Volvo, but we like it anyway. Funky styling and a finely honed driving experience make it a desirable option for younger buyers who don't need the rear seat legroom and boot space that a car of this size can't offer. Being a Volvo, it's safe and well built too. One of the things that's always puzzled me is how Swedes, the hardest drinkers and biggest partiers of all Western Europeans, could end up turning out cars like Volvos. Is there some sort of switch that trips as soon as they reach the age of 21, turning them into Sven Goran Eriksson? Well, perhaps. But the development of cars like Volvo C30 shows that there can be a real spark in contemporary Swedish design. It's impossible to consider the sporty C30 without at least a passing reference to Volvo's old P1800 ES, the car used by uh, Roger Moore in the original 60s series of The Saint. That was it. On with the new stuff. Now, the C30 is based on the uh, platform of the S40 saloon and takes Volvo's contemporary design direction and smashes it out of the park. If you're still not quite comfortable with the concept of a, a sexy looking Volvo, then this one will leave you wondering exactly when the sands of motoring fashion shifted under your feet. The design brief was formed from various customer clinics and when it took shape it was relatively loose and easy to fulfil. Customers wanted something that was desirable low and wide with big wheels and four seats. As a result, this is the fourth car to be spawned from the S40's design platform, the other two being the V50 Estate and the C70 Convertible. But it's the C30, more than any other Volvo model, that has been responsible for uh, driving down the average age of Volvo ownership. On the road, some of the more powerful C30 models can feel slightly nose heavy, but um, traction is so good that when you get it right, uh, you can just slingshot out of the corner with very little drama and, and not much in the way of torque steer. Plus the T5 engine has one of the most infectious notes around. Uh, wet traction off the line isn't the greatest, but lateral grip is superb. If you really want to exploit the C30's performance, then you want to steer clear of the automatic option, which really takes the edge off the car's punch. The smart pick is the six-speed manual transmission that's fitted to some of the more powerful versions. Although there is the option of a, an advanced twin-clutch transmission that Volvo called PowerShift. Engine choice is agreeably broad, taking in everything from the modest, this 100 PS 1.6 litre petrol unit that I'm driving here, to the decidedly immodest, in the form of the 230 PS turbo five-cylinder power plant that's used by the top of the range T5 version and that engine is more widely renowned as the unit that flings Ford's Focus ST hot hatch up the road. Now in between, you've got a choice of several other petrol units. There's a, a 125 PS 1.8, a 145 PS 2 litre, or a 170 PS 2.4i. Looking for a diesel? Well, there's an entry level 109 PS 1.6, which you can also order in eco-friendly drive guys or there's a 2 litre 136 PS unit that many choose uh, that sits just below the range topping 180 PS D5. The other engine option is a 1.8 litre flexi-fuel unit that can run either on normal unleaded petrol or renewable E85 bioethanol. Now being dedicated to my craft I've gone for the cheapest 1.6 litre petrol version here. Um, Entry-level cars being, in my experience, the best barometer of design excellence. After all, anyone can shove a big engine in, spec a car up like a Christmas tree and make it feel good. And this model? Well, it's not the kind of car you'd expect for 15 grand. No, it's much better than that. Um, although you'll need to manage your expectations given the modest performance output. Still, 60 from rest can be dispatched in 11.2 seconds although you'd need to be very slick at crashing through the manual gearbox to get anywhere near this time. I, I'm not sure that I'd feel the need to go much faster than that in a Volvo C30, though if you buy the pricey T5 version, which gets from rest to 60 in 6 seconds on the way to a top speed of nearly 150 miles an hour, then you certainly can. Built at Volvo's Ghent factory in Belgium, the C30 is a, a four-seater and the rear seats fold flat to create a very useful loading space. Now, though it shares the same wheelbase as the S40 saloon, 
it's actually 22 centimeters shorter. And this car shares not one, one panel with its four-door stablemate, instead offering a very different look and feel. Now it scarcely seems possible that so much has been paired from the saloon car design on which this model is based, but such is the wheel at each corner stance that this car measures just 4248 millimetres from stern to stern. Now that inevitably means that boot space is at something of a premium, but you still get a fairly reasonable 433 litres in here, which you can extend to 947 litres by folding the rear seats flat. There are neat design touches everywhere you look, from the uh, so-called floating center control console with fresh air behind it, to the horseshoe design of these rear tail lamps, the curved arc of the rear glass, and the pumped up shoulders of the car that run from the front to the rear lights in one uninterrupted sweep. Some things are reassuringly Swedish. Safety hasn't been skimped on, and as well as the usual airbags and seatbelt pretensioners, the C30 serves up whips, that's a whiplash protection system, sips, that's a side impact protection system, and even the option of bliss, that's a blind spot information system that's built into the door mirrors here. Now it acts like an extra scent set of eyes, utilizing digital camera technology to monitor the area around the car, up to three meters each side, and up to nine and a half meters behind you. If a vehicle enters the area, there's a, a flasher on the windscreen pillar near the rear view mirror to alert you that something's there. Active at speeds above 10 kmh, this setup isn't the only really unexpectedly clever safety system that uh, buyers of the C30 enjoy. Special water repellent glass is fitted to the side windows and the mirrors. Water beads up on it and the airstream quickly clears it, leaving unimpeded visibility. Prices lie in the 15 to 22,000 pound bracket, so the C30 sits somewhere between mainstream, sportily orientated hatches like, say, Vauxhall's Astra Sport Hatch and premium badged compact hatchbacks like three door versions of BMW's 1 Series and Audi's A3. All models get Volvo Sporty R design trim as standard, and this includes a sports body kit, a rear spoiler, and an R design badge on the front grille. Inside, the unique interior really looks very classy. You've got this off-black uh, T-Tech fabric contrasting with the cream leather here, embossed with the R-Design logo. And complementing eye-catching blue instrument dials, a leather steering wheel, aluminium ridged uh, driving pedals, and aluminium inserts on the gear lever. If you buy the 1.6D diesel drive model, that's capital D-R-I-V small e, you can expect a, a very impressive combined fuel economy figure of 62.2 miles to the gallon, and that really is very good for a car of this class. The CO2 figure is good too at 115 grams per kilometre. If you go for the 2 litre D, which offers more of the kind of performance that this car's styling suggests, then you also get a very good fuel figure. That's 49.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Uh, go for a, a more common petrol, like a, a 1.6 litre variant, and you can expect 40 miles to the gallon with 167 grams per kilometre of CO2, while the 2 litre petrol manages 38 to the gallon and 177 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, the, uh, the T5 range topper, expect around 32 miles to the gallon from that, while the D5 diesel range topper, well, that's about 45 to the gallon on a regular basis. Insurance groupings, well, they range between 7 and 16. Younger customers have started adding Volvo to their shortlists in recent years, and the C30 Sports Coupe is a major reason why. It's stylish and genuinely enjoyable to drive while retaining core Volvo virtues like build quality and safety. Those sleek looks do come slightly at the expense of interior space, but it's really good value if you're comparing with other premium badge rivals. Select the right variant and running costs can be class leading too. Overall, the C30 is a highly desirable alternative to other premium small cars.